A wife makes herself irresistible to her husband by learning to meet his five basic needs. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm going to talk about tonight. You marriage, as I said before, last night, what marriage is about meeting needs, serving your spouse. But you cannot meet their needs except you know what their needs are. If not, you are doing all you can, working your fingers to the bones, but you are not meeting their needs and they're still unhappy. Why? Because you don't know what their needs are. So friend, this message is important to know. Watch this now. So she makes herself attractive to her husband by learning the, uh, to meet the five basic needs of her husband. Amen. She does not chide him for what he is not, but celebrates him for what he is. Amen. Amen. All of that we're going to talk about. But let's, let's, let's begin at number one. Number one. What's the first need there? Well, friends, the first need, we find that Ephesians 5. Please turn the Bible with me very quickly. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5, right? Ephesians, are you there? Let's jump over to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5. What book did I say? Ephesians chapter 5. And we're going to use two verses now. Well, let's take it from 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he's the saved of the body. Let's go down to verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. Guess what? And the wife sees that she reverence her husband. I touched on that last night. So let me just say it again for those who didn't hear it. The first and great need of your husband is admiration and respect. Admiration. Admiration. Admiration, oh friends, affirmation. There are three words I'd like you to write in your book tonight, ladies. I hope you have your book and your pens now. Hello. Oh, three words you must write in your book tonight. By the way, I like when my people do some writing, you know. It is said that the shortest pencil is better than the longest memory. Amen. So do a little writing. Three words and three A's. Three A's, you must remember in marriage. First, admiration, affection, and appreciation. Friend, ladies, I'm going to share with you something that's going to amaze you. You know what the greatest need of your husband is? And any man, the greatest need of a man or a husband is to feel that his wife regards him as her hero amen in other words she is his most ardent fan amen she celebrates him what does the word affirmation mean that's the number one need of a man if the man who writes the book the five love languages he will tell you every person has five uh, has five love languages is that clear but there's one that emerges head and shoulder above all others. And for the man, primarily, even his need, the author of that book, his need, my need, and 95% of the men that I've met, you know what their, need, their basic need is? Affirmation. What is affirmation? Words of encouragement. Emotional support. Oh, that's affirmation. You are always ready to celebrate him, to praise him for his accomplishment. Watch this now. A lot of ladies, you know, friend, they will focus more on what the man is not. Hello. Oh, you are not this. Look at you. Who are you? You are not even like that man over there. No. A wise woman, you don't focus on what he is not. No. You celebrate him for what he is. Amen. That's how. 
you attract a man. You know, friends, there is something that torments me continually. There's something that rests heavily on my heart. It's extremely disturbing to me. You know what that is? How difficult, the difficulty that people have in praising their spouse. Oh, friends, it is, uh, <laughs> oh, please permit me to say, friends, it is like a bacteria. It's like a disease that has overtaken humanity. It is so difficult for a man to look in the eyes of his wife and say, you know, you are beautiful. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. Oh, and even if he says it, he may say it once a year or once in a decade. But I'm talking about, are you able to say this every week, every day? It's so difficult for a woman to look at her husband. And say, you're a hard worker. I see so many great qualities in you. You are my hero. And I celebrate your capabilities. You are a great man. Oh, you, you are classic. Oh, you are number one. I mean, you are just amazing. So difficult to see a lady do that. And yet, the man is looking for that every day. That could make the difference between deadlock and holy wedlock. That could make the difference between depression of a man, sadness, and joy. A man, many times, is love starved. Because he does not have a wife who appreciates him. But you know, friends, look at it. Yet, when he dies, she is liberal with those words. She goes on the pulpit to eulogize him or she at his graveside in the casket. She wants to take him out of the casket. She's crying over him. Oh, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> he is a superman. He loved the kids. Wow. What am I going to do without him? I can't live without him. Then I would ask the question while he was alive. Did you tell him? No, never tell him. And it could be that if that man knew all of that, he could possibly still be alive. Amen. <laughs> but he died a broken heart. He works hard every day and he comes in and that woman never once tell him, I love, I appreciate you for your hard work. You're a great man. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. That man goes to bed and he's sad. He's depressed every day. He leaves the house in sadness. And that woman could have transformed that home into a palace. If she was only in the habit of praising him. Some time ago, I went and visited my brother-in-law. Remember when I just went to New York? He would take us into the city. You know, he was an engineer in the city and he, you know, helped to build a lot of these great buildings in the city. And he would take us in the city. 
then you would always take us around to the Manhattan side, you know. We said, why, why should we go there? Why should we go there? You know, he was married to my sister. Oh, he's gonna take us over there. And when he gets there, you know what he does? He points up there. He says, yeah, yeah, I, I helped you build that. You see that skyscraper there? Yeah, I helped to build that. Even the winter man, you should see me hanging off the building with ropes holding me up. Ah, I helped to build that. What was he doing? He was, he was, he, 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 he was yearning. He was saying, please appreciate me, praise me. You see, a man is career oriented. And whenever he does a good job on the job, whenever he achieves a milestone in his job, he is coming home to a woman who will stand at the door and say, honey, you did that? Whoa. I know you were good, but I didn't know you were so good. Amen. That man, oh, friends, mm -mm -mm. oh, the next day, five o'clock, and he can't wait to come home. Amen. You need to understand, friends, the power of your words when you celebrate a man. Guess what? You may get it from many people out there. In the rare place and elsewhere on the street. But none is more important to him than when he gets it from his wife. Amen. Get it from his wife, it makes all the difference in the world. So, ladies, I came by here to help you to change your mindset and change your marriage. I came by here to tell you this today. According to on the authority of God's word, Proverbs 16, 24. You know what the Bible says there? Pleasant words are as a honeycomb. Oh, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. It makes a man healthy. It makes a man wants to walk miles. He'll walk on broken bottles just to get to you when you praise him with your words. Amen. Ladies, you know, you must make a commitment in your home, ladies, with your husband, both of you together. This is the commitment my wife and I made when we got married. Sister. Amen. We made a commitment to each other. You know the commitment we made? The day of our wedding, we made a commitment that as long as we live by God's grace, we will never, ever, under no circumstance, at no time at all, and by no means, we will ever utter a negative word to each other. Not even in the form of a joke. Amen. Friends, I agree we did not hit the target all the time, 100%. There's no perfect marriage. We didn't hit the target 100% of the time, all the time, but we tried. And guess what, friends? After a while, it became second nature. Just that commitment alone, friends, I want to tell you this, is responsible. For us today, of 15 years this year, every day is a dating experience for us. Amen. I tell my folk, I tell folk, our marriage could not be more beautiful. Amen. Amen. Oh, friends. Oh, my wife and I, you know, we, 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 can't, we can't get enough of each other. I'm going out at night sometimes to throw in the garbage. She said, my wife says, sweetheart, I'm coming with you. I said, no, you don't have to come. She said, yeah, I'm coming with you. You might have to be your bodyguard. And by the time we get outside, guess what? We're walking again for another 30 minutes. In the morning, pillow talk. 3.30, 4 o'clock, just talking until 5, 6 o'clock. We can't get enough friends. You know why? We celebrate each other. Amen. Did you know, friends, if you are looking for the negatives in each other, you will find it. But forget about the minor flaws and shortcomings of your spouse. Forget about those. You know what to do? 
then you search. Hello. <laughs> you scan the atmosphere to find your spouse doing something good. Amen. In other words, Man. you 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 search for the good in them and then you celebrate them for it. Amen. When you do marriage like that, your spouse becomes your best friend. Amen. And you can't wait to come home. That's how we do marriage, friends. When we talk about a stunningly successful marriage, we're talking about what? Fondness. Amen. Admiration. Respect. Affection. And appreciation. Amen. That's how we do marriage. We must change the way we do marriage, friends. Did you know right now, uh, right now, friends, it is said, statistics tell us, that 80% of the communication in many homes is negative. That's why people have a problem having a great marriage. And they slowly grow apart. Hello today. In other words, love is hemorrhaged from the marriage because of negative words. Pleasant words are health to the bones. The converse is also true. Unpleasant words are disease to the bones. We can speak life in our marriage or we can speak death in our marriage. May God help us to speak life. Amen. Let's move on. What's the second need of a man that every woman must know about? Every man wants, number two, domestic support. Amen. <laughs> what is it? Domestic support. And miss that, friends. What does that mean? Watch this now. Every man needs peace and quiet. Amen. She, she creates a home that offers peace and quiet and refuge. A man loves a man loves quietness and peace. Amen. Ladies, don't be always nitpicky. Don't be troubled by every little thing. Don't make your house a place of misery. No. Did you know some ladies are very miserable? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I don't mean like, you know, in, in the U.S., you know, I mean, like in, um, <laughs> you know, some place across the world, you know, miserable. <laughs> Every molehill becomes a mountain. <laughs> they are bothered by everything. The husband stands up. He's at fault. He sits down. He broke the law. He turned around. Oh, he, 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 he has a problem. <clears throat> and friend, did you know one man one time? He left his home after about 30 years. He couldn't take it any longer. He went to the wilderness. And he, he, he built a cardboard home. <laughs> Hello. And he slept there that night. And he declared, he says, after many, many years, it was the most peaceful night's rest he has had. Mm -mm -mm. Did you know, friends, that when a woman starts getting miserable, it's a serious thing in that house. You know, the Bible talk, says about that. Let me talk. Let me, let me say something tonight. Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs. She, you know the, what the Bible says? It says, the contentions of a wife. Or I want continual dropping. Mm, 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 mm. Proverbs 19 and verse 13. A foolish son is a calamity of his father and the contentions of a wife are a continual dropping. You know, always dropping. When you have something dropping, dropping, dropping on your head all along, dropping, dropping. No ease, no break. Woo -woo. Oh boy, and the pain, just dropping. Mm -mm -mm. Then it tells us, Proverbs, Proverbs 21 tells us, sometimes you're in the house and the, the roof, the rooftop, mm -mm -mm. 
It is said, it is better to dwell in a corner of the house top than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Did you know, ladies, you contribute much to the atmosphere of the home? Oh, listen to me. Sometimes the, 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 the vibration is so great. Verse 19, Proverbs 21, 19, that you cannot even remain in the house top. Hello today. No. You're going to be like that man and leave the house and go to the wilderness. Watch this now. Verse 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. Not godly women. No. Leave that to those who know not God. But in your home, allow God's spirit to rule in your heart. Ladies, I know what you're saying. You're saying, Pastor, you don't know the kind of husband that I have. If you only knew, Pastor, if you only knew. Hello. Sometimes even the husband may be a certain way. But did you know if the reading was read earlier? You know what Elmer says? You can sweeten him. You can sweeten him with your calm and pleasant disposition. Amen. The spirit of God must rule in every heart. Amen. A man likes to know he comes home for house of quiet. Hello, a man loves quietness. And another thing, ladies, you must be a psychologist. When he comes home, don't, don't do the things that annoy him more. He spent a long time at work. Wrestling with the, on the job with the competitors and the workers. Fighting all day to get the work done, perhaps. He comes home. He comes home. When he comes through the door, you don't walk to the door and you grab the bill and say, hey, the bill is here. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Such a man wants to turn around and head back to whence he came. Oh, boy. Be a psychologist. You can present the bill, but present it at another time. When he comes home, what he needs then? He needs to come home to your warm embrace. Amen. He's coming home to his, his bride. You should be saying, oh, the bridegroom cometh. <sighs> Ladies, you might have grown in a culture that taught you to be rough, coarse, and uncouth, and insensitive. Because you see, we are also culturally Ladies, you must know this. If you grew up in that culture, you must know that if you are to have a happy home, you've got to unlearn some things. And then you've got to learn new things. Amen. You cannot enter marriage with those flawed qualities, those idiosyncrasies, those propensities. From even your family of origin. That's how your mom behaved. If it was not right and fit for marriage, you've got to unlearn that. Amen. And then you've got to learn new skills so you can make your home a little heaven and earth. Amen. We're talking about how to become the magnetic wife, to draw. Your husband, hello to the remember, a teaspoon of honey attracts more bees than a barrel of vinegar. There are many who believe, okay, he loved me more if I'm always bitter to him. No, 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 no. You are driving him into the arms of another. Did you know, friends, if a person lives in a home where he does not feel liked, loved, and respected, he will gravitate to another 
who makes him feel light, loved, and respected. A word to the wisest of Bishop Malenis, please let's learn these new techniques so we can make our home a little heaven on earth. Amen. Number three. Let's go very fast now. Number three, number three, number three. Number three, the man what? The man, he has a need for recreational companionship. Amen. <laughs> or what? His need of a life companion. What does that mean? He wants a recreational companion. Why? Sometimes the man may say, why you don't do this fun thing with me anymore? He has a need to have fun with his partner. That's a great need for me. Remember when he was growing up as a little boy, he used to be always what, playing ball with the other boys. Isn't that right? Yes. Always into little sports, always while the girl is inside, you know, helping mommy cleaning the house, the boy is outside playing ball. Remember, he's that same boy that became a man. There's something about a man and recreation. He wants a recreational companion. In other words, you must be fun. Amen. Don't be a cold stone transforming your home into a moral refrigerator. Amen. But some may say, but Pastor, he spends so much time on the on the field, you know, playing golf or watching the or playing football or playing cricket or, or so forth. He's so much into sport. I can't take it. He's always away from us. Ladies, did you know you could help him by deciding one day to be on the, to be watching the sport game with him? Exactly. Go fishing with him if that's his hobby. Say, hey, hey, honey, I'm coming with you today. <laughs> I'm coming with you today. One man, you know, he used to go shooting, you know, and then one Sunday, the, the lady said to him, you know, honey, give me a gun. I'm coming with you today. He got scared. But no, never, no need to get scared. Right? Hello, no need to get scared. Watch this now. Sometimes, just decide to go with him sometimes. And guess what? When you are with him, him and you're having fun with him, then oh, some of those buried concerns that you had, suppressed for a long time that you could not talk to him about. Now you can just nudge him and say, yeah, you know, you remember that thing we were talking about? Yeah, you know, I, uh, I like it. You know, what do you think about that? Oh, then, then, you know, he started to have conversation with you while he's having fun. And friends, you know what happened after a while slowly? He starts to say, wow, my wife is my best friend for she is interested in what I'm interested in. Amen. Friends, you can do a lot by just having fun with him sometimes. Amen. Recreational companionship. Number four. Hello, number four. This is a big one. Oh, ladies, you got to hear this. This one has to do with intimacy. Amen. Amen. Oh, you didn't hear that. All right, let me read the scripture. Because the scripture will add some light to that. Are you with me still? Scripture, Proverbs 5 and 15. Let's hear this now. Mm -mm -mm. Proverbs 5, and I just love the book of Proverbs. What do you say? Mm -mm. Drink waters out of thine own systems and running waters out of thine own bed. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own and not strangers with the amen. Then verse 18 now, hello. Just in case you don't know, you, you don't know that, 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 that God has a sense of you, watch this Let thy fountain be blessed, amen, and rejoice with the wife of thy youth, amen. Wow. Man has need for intimacy, ladies. Don't forget that, don't forget that, don't forget that. Let's jump over there to the book of Hebrews. 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 What does the Bible say? Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. Amen. But for mongers and adulterers, God will judge. 
we need to have a session and that alone when we talk to our ladies. Amen, amen, amen. All right? So that's number four. That's important. Okay? If not, if not, you could be setting the stage for an affair. You don't want that. Amen, amen. <laughs> Sometimes I say to, I say to ladies, you know, I say, do you drink gas? So I say, okay, why do you take your car then to the gas station? Do you drink gas? I said, no, I don't drink gas. So why do you take your car to the gas station? Because the car needs gas. So you give the car what it needs. Um, All right, okay. All right, let's move on to number five. Oh, number five, what is it? Oh, we're gonna end with number five. What a man likes as well, he wants an attractive spouse. Amen, attractive spouse. Oh boy, that's another sermon by itself. An attractive spouse, watch this now. Did you hear what the Bible says? If a man looketh at a woman, mm -mm -mm -mm. You know what, God, God knows what it's about. God knows that a man is visually stimulated. Amen. So guess what, ladies? He, 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 his need for her attractiveness is not right. She's possessed of inner and she's also possessed of outer beauty. Amen. He is proud, he is pleased and proud of her in private and in public. What do you say? Amen. Watch this now. His need for her attractiveness is not right. Watch this now. Listen, look at this. Look at this now, friends. She cultivates a Christ-like spirit in her inner self. Amen. She keeps herself physically fit. With diet and exercise. Amen. She doesn't just throw herself. Not at all. It's not right. And she wears her, her hair. Her clothes. In a way that her husband finds attractive and tasteful. Ladies, even when you dress. One question to ask. Do you dress only for those on the outside? Or do you ensure that your husband find your dress, what? Attractive and tasteful. Sometimes, you know, there are some ladies that overdo it, thinking that's what really turn on a man. But your husband must find your attire tasteful. Amen. Mm. So guess what? When you dress, Go to him and say, honey, how do I look? <laughs> how do I look? And tomorrow now, I'm going to teach the men that when the lady come to her, him, and say, how do I look? You say to her, Woof. just, 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 just walk for me. Amen. <laughs> and then you celebrate her. Oh boy, that's another message tonight. Is that I don't want to talk about that tonight, but you've got to be here tomorrow night when we talk about the irresistible husband. I want to close with this. Ladies, don't throw up yourself. Take care of yourself. Is that right? And did you know, friends, when it comes to attractiveness, there Attractiveness is a four-dimensional component. <laughs> Hello today. Four dimensions to attractiveness. The physical attractiveness is only number one. Hello. Listen, I want to give you an acronym. I want to close with an acronym. P-I-E-S. Amen. We talk about attractiveness. P-I-E-S. P-I-E-S. Pies. Amen. That's a four-dimensional component of attractiveness. What is the P? Your physical attractiveness. Remember now, that's only one-fourth. Amen. Some, think, some ladies, you know, think that, that that's all. That's all. Did you know, friend, that, that some, some ladies, you know, dress as though 
They believe that all they have of value is their outer shell. And that's a sad day. But friends, our, your physical attractiveness is only one quarter of the pie. Amen. So take care of the external. Amen. Yes, you need to. But don't forget the others now. Watch this now, the others. What? I, intellectual attractiveness. Read some good books. Know about what's happening around. A man who likes good conversation. Amen. Is that right? When a man comes to you and says, Honey, what do you think? You should not have a blank mind. You know, when he comes to you and says, Honey, I was thinking about this. What do you think? Then you look at him and says, Well, what do you think? Then he says, no, I don't mean what I think. I mean, I want to know what you think. Then she says, well, uh, well, I'm not thinking right now. What do you think? Oh, no way. No way. A man likes a woman that can have good conversation to Amen. Amen. It's called intellectual attraction. Learn something. Learn a skill if you got to. If you have not, if you have, if you have time on your hand and you don't know what to do, learn something new. Amen. So you can enrich the conversation. Amen. Amen. No, that's P. That's I. What about E? In a marriage, most important, emotional attractiveness. Hello today. In other words, we call it emotional intelligence. How do you make him feel when he is in your presence? That's emotional intelligence. Do you make him feel like a pea in a pod by your words? Or do you make him feel like a superstar? Amen. If I had time, I would talk a little more about that. How do you make him feel? Emotional attractiveness. Remember, friends, a man has emotion too. He may look like a coconut. <laughs> exactly. He may look hard and tough on the outside, like Arnold Charles Knight, you know, ready to overtake a building, to topple a building. You know, right? he, he, he looks invincible, hard like a coconut. Is that right? Yeah, but like a coconut, remember? Hey, there is jelly inside. Amen. In other words, brothers, he too has a need for tender loving care. Amen. The man too has emotion. So, massage his ego, amen, and be emotionally intelligent, amen, so you can build him up, edify him with your words. Finally, P-I-E-S, what's the S? Remember, P, physical, I, intellectual, E, emotional attractiveness, then S, spiritual attractiveness. That's your belief system. That's the time when you spend with God. Oh, the reading earlier says it. Okay, the lady should spend time with God. So as she emerges from the communion with God, her heart is filled with love and kindness and pleasantness so she can spread light and joy in the atmosphere of the home. Her tender personality can soften the disposition of the man. Amen. Ladies, tonight I know I've said enough. I want to charge you under God. Go forth. Go forth. And become that magnetic wife. Amen. 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 That magnetic wife. Number one, admiration and respect. Number two, domestic support. Number three, uh, recreational companionship. Number four, intimacy. And number five, an attractive spouse. If you stay with God long enough, he will give you outer beauty. Oh, and he will give you also inner beauty. You say, Pastor. I'm not the most attractive woman, but guess what? We can, you can make the best of what you have. Did you know, friends, when you possess inner beauty, that's most important. Did you know that when you get married, it is not so much the externals that you'll be living with, 
but it is the internal beauty. Amen. That is what sustains a marriage for the long haul. The inner beauty. The Bible calls it the inner man of the heart. The character. Amen. God can give us his character so that we can become a man, the magnetic wife. May God bless you ladies as you seek to become the magnetic wife. Amen. 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 <laughs> Wonderful. Amen. <laughs> Tonight I want to give a little word of appeal. <clears throat> Ladies, we're so happy that you joined us tonight. Ladies, tonight is your night. Tomorrow night we speak to the men. But tonight is a night for the ladies. Ladies. Ladies, do you under God want to commit that by God's grace? You will do whatever in your powers. Break the generational curse. Break the cycle. Destroy your old marriage. <laughs> Hello today. And ask God to help you to recreate a new marriage with the same person. Amen. Tonight is it your commitment by God's grace to say, Lord, Lord, you know, it's difficult. But in the midst of the challenges, Lord, please, I want to be the wife that will get your divine approval. I want to become the magnetic wife. This is your will, friends. Just assume an attitude of prayer. I want to pray for every lady tonight, every wife, every young girl, every, every woman, every bear. You may not yet be married, but God is preparing you if you will get married one day. It is now the school of preparation. You are in. I want to pray for you as well. Loving Father, oh God, I pray tonight that you honor the commitment of every woman, every girl, every youth, every person in the hearing of my voice. Oh God, by your grace and your power, help us to change our mindset so we can change our relationships. Many don't understand what relationship is. My relationship, the signs of relating. How do we relate to each other? Give us the skill set, oh God, that we relate well to each other and hence have good relationships. All these ladies tonight who declare by your grace, make me the magnetic wife. Help them by your spirit climb down in the deep recesses of their soul, oh God. Bring about the transformation that is needed. And I hope that every home every home, that the home that they represent, because of their presence, amen, that home will become a little heaven on earth. In Jesus' name, we ask it, and all God's people say, amen and amen.